Hi and welcome to 2017 paper 2 of the junior start higher level. We're on question 6 today. Now question 6 is a statistics question so I would advise pausing it to have it on a go yourself. If you want a copy of the questions with the answers built in on the next pages whatever just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and I'll send it on to you as soon as I can. So question 6 here okay part A and B are marked together okay and there are 15 D scales so a lot of chance to pick up good marks here you got part A right or part B right, you're going to be looking at getting the high part. Okay, I have to, that's most likely. Let's read it through. Clara asked all of the students in her school some questions about their eating and exercise. One of Clara's questions was, how healthy is your diet? They were asked to tick one box. Was their diet very healthy, fairly healthy, not very healthy, or very unhealthy? She drew a pie chart to show her results. Her results and the size of each angle of the pie chart are shown below the table. Now you're not given all the answers, we have to, I guess, work them out. So you're told here that you, the number of students you're not given, the size of the angle here is 96. So you can't really tell much there, you can't equate them. With the fairly healthy ones you can, so you know that 150 equals 90 degrees in that circle. Now if you know your circles, there's 360 degrees in a full circle. Uh, 180 is half, 90 is a quarter. So a quarter of the students said they were fairly healthy. So when a quarter is 150, a half is 300, and the full um, school sample or whatever was 600. So I've done that down here. So 90 degrees equals to 150. So I'm going to divide across so both sides by 90. Okay, I find out 1 degree equals 150 divided by 90. Now I could change that to a decimal, but I'm going to end up probably with a decimal that goes on. I'm going to have to shorten it. I might incur a rounding error. If I leave it in fraction form, I don't have to worry about rounding. And the calculator can handle it. So if 1 degree equals, equals that number, okay, whatever it is, 96 degrees equals that number by 96. Okay, now I did that, I got 160, I filled it in here. I then go, well, back working the other way, okay, uh, 170, that's divided by 6. If you know that your answer here is uh, 600. So we know that the that if um, if 600 people equals the full 360, I've worked out there that the um, the 102 degrees, and I've done it down here, so 90 degrees equals 150, then one person equals 90 divided by 150. Okay, that's the size of, their, of the angle corresponding to one, correspond, one sample person. So 170 of them, multiply that number 90 over 150 by 170, and I got the 102 degrees. Okay, so that's, that's filled in here. And uh, the last one, you're just taking those three numbers together away from 600 to get the 120. You're adding these three angles together, taking it from 360 to give you the, the last angle here. Job done. Okay, so fairly handy. Now, part C here, okay, is about data, types of data. So you need to know these. Um, I often say to students, um, have you have, you know, when you're bored in class or have a free class, you know, what do you do, you know? Um, you can imagine that it's usually not maths. I can get it, you know, you don't really want to be doing the maths question, but if you're bored in class or you're whatever, I would suggest reading the beginning of each chapter as a way of studying, okay? Um, and you, you just really keeps away the boredom, but it also helps you get these concepts, okay? And, and then even a great, even better way would be to make a synopsis of the beginnings of all these different chapters and try and make it into your own words and so you remember it, okay? Because these things, these definitions are hard to remember, and if you don't have a good clue of what they are, you're going nowhere. Now, I've put in some infographics to help, but they're not there on the exam. Okay, so it's only what's on the left-hand side of this page. Anyway, part C here is a 10C. It says, complete the table below to show one question. In each case, that Clara um, could ask that would generate each type of data. Each question should be about eating or exercise. One is already filled in. So... You have your numerical continuous data, numerical discrete data, categorical ordinal data, and categorical nominal. Okay. Now, if you look at this infographic here, it breaks down. Data is just things we collect, okay, information. That could be numerical. Okay. Now, that numerical could be something that's called continuous, which means it can take any value, uh, and it can change. It can be decimal. Okay. A discrete data is something that will always be a whole number. Okay. For example could be like your weight fluctuates, even over the day. If you drink a glass of water, you're heavier. Um, 
whereas you're the same number of, of A's that were gotten achieved in a, in a class. You've got six A's or seven A's. There's no A, B, or I suppose nowadays A's it makes sense. One, two, three, whatever it is. Um, now, that can also be categorical. Okay, we're categorizing it. And that can be ordinal, okay, where you have a hierarchy of the of the information, okay, a scale as such, one, two, three, four, whatever. Uh, or you can you can make it into a scale. Or nominal, it's just it's just information. Maybe an opinion, um, it's either a breed of dog, the color of an eye, uh, whatever. Okay, the number of legs. Okay. Um, and that's I suppose one infographic that tries to explain the difference. So if we're talking Try to think of a question that you would ask to elicit a numerical continuous response. It'd be a question about their health, eating or exercise. That would be um, uh, a, basically a number, first of all, and a number that can change. Okay, or can be described by with a by a decimal or fraction. Now the class, there's any number of ones here. Okay, I put it in here. Your answer is what is your weight? Okay, could be what is your height? That could that could be something to do with exercise. Um, how many miles do you walk every day? Okay, something like that. Okay. Um, now, numerical discrete, okay, is a definite whole number. And it can't be a fraction for decimal. So you don't do, well, you could argue this, but whatever. You don't do one and a half push-ups. It's either uh, not a push-up or it is a push-up. Okay, so zero to one. So it's a whole number. Okay, and it, there's no decimals. So how many push-ups can you do in a minute? Okay. Um, what is your pant size? You could argue. Okay, will be a question there. Um, now, they give you category or no. Okay, what is a hierarchy? So, healthy, less healthy, less healthy, less healthy. Or categorical nominal, okay, is something that you're describing in an activity. What is your favorite color? Now, we're talking about extra, exercise or eating. So, what is, which do you prefer, walking or jogging? Um, or even which do you prefer, uh, bread or pasta? You know, that's, that's about eating, okay. No, hopefully that makes sense. It's a tricky question if you to back think it, okay? But if you know this stuff, you could maybe make a fairly good hash at it. Um, you're looking probably at a low power for getting one right, high power for getting two right, and the full marks for getting all three right, okay? Or good work on all three would get you like, um, definitely the, the high power there, okay? Now that's part C, so part D, I think. Clara is worried that the students in her school are not a representative sample of all the students in Ireland. Explain why it is important to have a representative sample when doing statistical research. Now, I teach science, um, and this is a common thing that I would hear in just, not this in the classroom, but even among friends and colleagues and people, okay, is people don't really understand how science works. Okay, and you hear in the media, uh, one day it's good to drink red wine, the next day it's bad to drink red wine or whatever, okay. And usually if you look deeper, and who wants to, first of all, who does have time, to look at the, these studies and to go, are they a valid study? Are they published by the industry or published by the anti-industry? Are they are they big enough sample sizes? Okay, I've seen studies go uh, making big, broad claims, and you look at them more carefully, and the sample size was 10. Like 10. It's just way too small. To make any judgment on the population of Ireland, which is what, four and a half million. Okay. The only time we ever do a full, um, sample of the population is during the census. And that's a big job. It costs millions to do it. Takes months to accomplish it. And even then, you're never getting everybody. Okay. Um, so it's just, it's just not possible. Okay. Um, a sample can be, if it's a good sample, and um, can be used to make judgments on the whole population. Okay, but only if it's a good sample. So I'm gonna have some examples here of what's bad. Okay, so you take the infographic down here on the bottom left. Okay, now the NBA is the basketball in America, but whatever. Um, if you were looking to find information about heights of Americans and you only sampled NBA players, would that be a good choice? I mean, the, to be an NBA player, to be a basketball player, you generally have to be tall. So you're only you're, you're making judgments about the population of Americans based on the tallest people in America. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Uh, suddenly every shop will be selling size 14 shoes as, as their most popular uh, brand, uh, size. And, you know, they'll be left with um, a lot of them left because not most people are not size 14. Um, in science, okay, and this often happens in bad science, if a sample is not meeting your expectations and in, in the science 
uh, feelings you shouldn't have expectations. You have a hypothesis you test. Okay, if it fails, it fails. If, if it's uh, accepted, it's accepted. But if you have a vested interest in it, or you really want your results to come out a certain way, it's very easy to just ignore a result that doesn't meet your requirements. And that's called cherry picking. Okay, and you shouldn't be ignoring data unless there's a valid reason to do so. Now sometimes there is. Okay, but it would generally be considered bad science. Um, and this is why some studies come out with weird results, and you go, "Why is that?" It's usually the researcher was doing things that weren't correct. Okay, and it's not right. Okay, it's wrong. It's not necessarily illegal. Okay, well, you know, it's definitely unethical, and it's not something we should we should we should be encouraging. But it is something we need to know that it exists. Okay. Anyway, so I've given two different examples here. Okay, um, you're saying so th that the results aren't biased. Okay, now bias is a, a word that's thrown around. But in science, you're trying to be unbiased in order to meet, so that your data actually means something. Okay. If, let's say, for example, I had a bias against um, <clears throat> uh, bald men. Okay. And I, I, I never pick bald men for my study because they're just bald. Okay. That's a bias. Okay. Um, I, it could be a misogynistic, a sexist, a homophobic, a racist, whatever. Those things can affect the sample, sample that's chosen. It's not representative of the entire population. Anyway, or you could say a different example, that the so that results would apply to the whole population instead of just a sample. Okay, and there's, again, there's any number of ways of saying that. Okay, you can give an example like this one here. If I picked only the tall people in the class, I couldn't make judgments about the whole school because I've just picked the tall people. You know, something like that would work. Okay, as long as you don't overstate it. This case, you, some of these are five A's, but there's a five B here, so anything valid, we get the two. Okay. Should we end the question six? I think so. That's it. So I see you on question seven.